Okay. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Li Wang. I'm going to talk about uh, generative adversary networks. First, uh, I will explain what is generative adversary networks or GANs. In 2014, Ian Goodfellow published a stunning paper introducing the world to GANs, which are a new architecture uh, for an unsupervised narrow neural network and have the potential to create systems that learn more with less help from humans. The basic idea for GANs is that there are two models and they fight against each other to achieve far better performance compared to traditional networks. GANs are the hottest topic and consist of the most interesting idea in the last 10 years in machine learning. In order to fully understand GANs, one has to understand the difference between supervised and unsupervised learning machines. Supervised machines are trained and tested based on large quantities of labeled samples. In other words, they require large data sets containing the features or predictors as well as its corresponding labels. For example, a neural network learns to recognize photos of cats and dogs by analyzing tens of thousands of cat and dog photos. But those photos cannot be used to train networks unless people carefully label what pictures in each image. Labeling large number of samples is costly and uh, time consuming. In unsupervised learning, a neural network doesn't have those luxury labels. They had to learn on the job as they go. They learn from mistakes and try not to make similar errors in the future. Unsupervised learners don't require a huge amount of human effort, but they tend to be less accurate. Naturally, there is a stronger motivation to improve the unsupervised machines and to decrease the reliance on the supervised ones. GANs can be viewed as an improving unsupervised learning machine. Let's take an analogy to explain the concept of GANs. Say there is a boy named Sean, and one day he has some random thoughts and wants to draw a painting. He doesn't have a clear idea, so the first version of his painting is a scribble. Fortunately, Sean has a friend named Lily. She's happy to help him. She plans to teach Sean to paint Van Gogh's famous paint sunflower step by step. While Sean is learning to draw sunflower, Lily is also learning to correctly distinguish the famous painting from Sean's paintings. The big picture is that in each round, Lily is presented with two paintings, one from Sean and one is the sunflower. Because of the lack of experience at the first round, Lily only has 50% confidence to distinguish the two paintings. After looking into the feedback, Lily improves her identification skills. At the same time, Sean receives a hint from Lily. So in the second round, Sean joins a flower, and Lily has more confidence to identify those two paintings. Follow this pattern. Sean can draw a painting that matches the sunflower. This process will end when Sean dramatically improves his skill on drawing the sunflowers. And Lily also improves her identification skills, but first, it's hard to differentiate two paintings. Now let's back to the real theory. The main idea behind the GAN is to have two competing neural network models. One takes noise as input and generates samples, so it's called the generator. The other model calls the discriminator, receives samples from both the generator and the training data, and has to be able to identify correct and fake inputs. If the discriminator makes the right prediction, the generator updates its parameters in order to generate better fake samples to fool the discriminator. If the discriminator's prediction is incorrect, it tries to learn from its mistake uh, to avoid similar mistakes in the future. In other words, these two models play a continuous game. While the generator is learning to produce more and more real realistic samples, and the discriminator is learning to get better and better at distinguish generated data from real data. Okay, next part, I will introduce some applications of GANs. Although they are a relatively new concept, GANs have started to show real potential. 
want to draw a picture but have no talent, no problem. You make a rough sketch of what you want, choose colors. Guess instantly turn your scribble into a drawing. In this example, a user has scribbled a few green lines that Gans have converted into a grassy field. And the user has drawn a black triangle that Gans has turned into a detailed mountain. Applications that create art are one of many reasons to study generative models that create images. Gans also have the ability to take averages of images and add or subtract them. Here, uh, Gans begin with a man with glasses, then subtract a man without glasses, and then add a woman without glasses. At last, a woman with glasses can be obtained. Gans are often used to map some inputs to one of many acceptable outputs. As long as the GAN is able to find a small number of these ac acceptable outputs, it's useful. One example is text-to-image translation, in which the input is a caption for an image, and the output is an image matching that description. Um, GANs can also be used in image-to-image -image translation. This includes many kinds of transformations of image. Converting a satellite photo into a map, a sketch into a photo-like image, and converting an apple to an orange, and more. Guess you can also turn a horse video into a zebra video. <laughs> so it's cool, right? <laughs> um, also can generate high resolution images from low resolution ones. And in the medicine field, privacy concerns limit the amount of available data. GANs can fill in the missing data, making it possible to produce entirely fabricated patient database. In this example, the idea is to train the generator to sample drug candidates for a given disease as precisely as possible to existing drugs from a drug database. So, um, as a powerful and a flexible neural network, GANs are very promising and have great potential applications in a large variety of fields. In the near future, maybe one of those applica applications will come from your ideas. So if you have interesting guests, there are more sources you can dive in. Thank you.